Hello and welcome into the PHNX Cardinals podcast presented by the DraftKings Sportsbook app, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. Leave us a five-star review. I'm Johnny Venerable, joined by a rather robust group of PHNX Cardinals. I, I want to say just brothers, because we're here, we're hanging out on a Wednesday. Damian Anderson, former product of Northwestern Arizona Cardinal running back. Frank Sanders, second round pick out of Auburn, former Arizona Cardinal wide receiver. My new partner in crime, of course, week two, Mr. Bo Brock. Gentlemen, how are we living? We're living. You know I mean? We're good. I got my boy Frank Sanders uh, on the podcast with me. Frank and I go way back. So I'm excited to be here. Uh, I'm, I'm excited to hear uh frank's rants you know what i mean his linguistic uh <laughs> command of the english language and obviously johnny and bo you know what you guys that extra sauce that you bring to the table so today's gonna be a good day man I, I, i'm excited <laughs> i command the english language so well man that he that he is sitting here anticipating <laughs> such vibrata that i want to bring to the table i'm he gonna bring it. it he gonna bring it this is going to be therapeutic for me, guys. I'm I'm on daddy duty solo. My wife's out of town, so I I've got to, I've got about forty hours under my belt of just being a single parent right now. So, and I know all you guys are Hall of Fame rubber stamp Hall of Fame fathers. So, I, I need some I need some uh, I just need some whatever you guys get, can bring to the table here. Uh, a couple things. Uh, make sure you got some cameras. You know what I mean? So you keep the monitor. You know what's going on at all times. Number two, they don't have an app for that. Like, you're working, bro. You should. You got to be able to delegate those roles and make things happen. And, and three, you, you let the missus leave, bro. You got, you, you're doing some work, and you just wow. – I know. She's, uh, she's, she's a like, modern man wow. in 2022. He's That's a, right. He's a stay-at-home wow. dad, and he's working. I'm not wow. the king. Putting in those hours. <laughs> I mean, he got those Bud Lights close, though. That's you know, right. We, you got them Bud Lights ready. That's <laughs> ready. Ready. Before we get to some hardcore Cardinals talk, is is our guy Frank Sanders wearing an Augusta eighteen hat, or is that an AJ Green eighteen hat? Oh, bro. Hey, look, I like the way you flip that, man. I, I I can cover all those bases because I'm a fan of all both of those spots. Uh, one, I'm a fan of AJ Green. Number two, I I wish I got a chance to play at Augusta. Never got a chance to do that, but this is actually. One of the golf courses out here, Agula, for, if, for, for, for those who are not from Phoenix, is Agula off of 35th Avenue Baseline, another one of my little favorite tracks I get to smash some of the homies at. Well, speaking Frank's of real deal. I, I, my, I could attest, Frank's real deal. He's a good, he's a great golfer. We're going to talk about the, the DraftKings Sportsbook back later on. The fact you can get Tiger Woods right now, plus 4,000 to win the Masters. Ooh. But before we do that, gentlemen... We're going to talk about yet another highly touted cornerback prospect that the Arizona Cardinals may or may not have their eye on. Today was the LSU Pro Day, and such All-American, two-time SEC player, uh, Derek Stingley Jr. was on full display, and the Cardinals were incredibly hands-on with his workout, so much so that the Cardinals' defensive back coach was helping conduct the workout itself. Now, Stingley himself, I think by a lot of people's accounts, he and the kid out of Cincinnati appear to be the top two cornerback prospects. Sauce Gardner is his name uh, on the board. I, I would imagine that they both go within the top 15. Now, be that as it may, the Cardinals pick 23rd. Stingley has that profile. I mean, we talked about the kid out of Washington last week, and I think a lot of us were a little bit iffy just because he looks and, and plays so much like what the Cardinals have already. He's under six foot, a little bit undersized, great tackler, doesn't have supremely gifted ball skills. Stingley, on the other hand, I believe had six interceptions as a freshman at LSU. He's got ball skills for days. He's over six six foot. He's about six one. He he profiles as probably a poor man's Patrick Peterson, even with the LSU ties. So, you know, ball, I'll start with you. Like, what do you make of the Cardinals just hands-on approach with not only Stingley, but the quarterback position in general, right? Yeah, I can't tell if this is just a massive smoke screen or if this is the team being serious about bolstering this position because we heard Cliff Kingsbury at the Combine talk about how they have to address the cornerback position because of how short it fell at the end of last season. 
So are, are they going to be in serious contention for a guy like Stingley? It seems like they're going to have to move up in the draft if they want either one of those guys because there's not four or five quarterbacks going in the top 10 again. It's going to be a lot. There's not going to be a defensive player waiting to go off the board at nine like last year. As you said, J.C. Horn, you had uh, Patrick Sertain Jr. in there as well, who was fantastic in his first year. If you want a guy like Stingley, I got to wonder if the Arizona Cardinals and Steve Keim are going to aggressively move up for his services or if they're just trying to play their cards to kind of smoke screen who they really want at 23. I'm just excited. I'm looking for a cornerback that with some skill sets. Just off the picture by itself, man, this guy, I mean, he plays the ball in the air, has great hands. Just on this play, on this one play by itself, you, you already touted him as a first, you know, as a, as an All-American, so he he has proven himself across the board to be one of the top cornerbacks, not just in the SEC, but in the country. So, look, that ball skill right there, um, unfortunately, it's against an Auburn guy. Whack, I'm sorry. I had to get myself together. I had to come back. I apologize for that. I'd have never let that happen. Ever let that happen, D.A. That, that number looked familiar, though. I'm just going to leave it at that. At that. that number looked look familiar. But, no, I think you guys bring up some great points. I agree it's going to cost if they have to go up and get a guy like Stingley. Uh, two, you have to look at Stingley. I know that we mentioned he had six interceptions, but he hasn't played much in the last two seasons. That was his freshman year. That team was loaded. It was loaded at defensive line. So I think what we're seeing is the Cardinals simply doing their research, going on there, checking out some high-profile talent. If he does slide, okay, we got a great feel for him. And there's always the second time around, right, free agency. That might happen where the Cardinals might have an opportunity for him. Uh, there's a lot of comps, as you mentioned, Pat, Pat P. He plays in the SEC. He has all the, the measurables that you want, ran a 4-3 at his pro day, as you mentioned, over six foot, so played against some of the best competition in the SEC. So he checks off all those, bark, all those boxes, even familiarity with the NFL. One can argue that LSU players are lighting it up in the National Football League right now. So that only helps the fan base, et cetera. I don't see, unless they make a move, I like the Cardinals, and maybe it's for this segment, another segment. I like the edge rusher staying at 23, getting George Karloftis from Purdue. You know, another comp to Nick Bosa, very similar. Guy's big, strong, fast, played in the Big Ten. You look at him, he just has that nasty look. Like, I just want to play football. You know, move from Greece. We could call him the Greek freak, too. Make some dope PHNX shirts and make it happen. But, I mean, with Stingley – Yes, if he's there, but we all know in this game, one thing that people are going to pay for, they're going to play for defensive linemen, you know, edge rushers and cornerbacks. And I don't see him, unless the Cardinals move, move up, getting him uh, at 23. If they sit and wait, I like uh, George Karloftis there. Yeah, I just I, I have concerns about this position group as a whole, but I also have concerns about their ability to generate pressure up front on the defensive line. And I saw this secondary hold up fine last year with Marco Wilson starting as a rookie. Robert Alford playing well. You know, you, you would assume Byron Murphy's going to be better in year four contract years, probably going to play his best football of his career. I just, I don't know what you, you take him. And yes, he probably becomes your best corner, hopefully in the next one to three years. But to me, when, when you don't have that supremely gifted presence of, a, of an elite pass rush and you don't have a defensive tackle that can generate pass rush consistently with all due respect to J.J. Watt, it'd be 33 years of age. It just, to me, it, this is this is a position right now that almost feels like a luxury for the Cardinals because they have capable bodies on the roster. Yeah. I don't I don't think they have capable bodies at, at pass rusher outside of Marcus Golden. I mean, I think you guys know we have to talk about something. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I think that with the Cardinals being there, we have to identify, hey, you know, and, and connect the stories. As you mentioned Johnny, the DB coach was there, so getting personal with him. Frank knows that that means something during these combine workouts. It's mostly about relationships, just in anything that you do. So if that DB coach is working you out, whether it was at the combine and they had some great conversations, watched you on film, it's that familiarity. Obviously, we know he can play coming from the SEC. I think he checks off all, all those boxes. If there's a move, I, you know, sure. But I think that there's more pressing concerns, and I think the game of football – starts at the line of scrimmage and that starts with generating you know pass rush or protecting the quarterback or being able to run the football and the cardinals losing chandler jones you know love a guy like marcus golden love canard you know like we said last show the over under with jj is it going to be 10 games or is it going to be more than 10 games you just don't know so that being the pressing concern i, I see them if they move up it's going to be an edge player or sit at 23 and wait for carloftis 
if they're able to add a guy like Stingley, though, it would be the return of the no-fly zone. I mean, if you think about the secondary, Byron Murphy Jr., you've got uh, Marco Wilson, you've got Jeff Gladney. Those are some intriguing young pieces on the back end. You've got Jalen Thompson, Buda Baker, and your two linebackers are pretty good at covering as well, Isaiah Simmons and Zayvon Collins. But to your guys' point, and i got to ask our resident playmaker and Frank Sanders, is if you're preparing for a team one week that has a devastating pass rush or one that has a good group of covered corners, what's going to give you more problems as a wide receiver? If the defensive line is, if the defensive line is tough, because they're going to put pressure on the quarterback. Uh, the secondary, I'm not worried about it. They're going to have to do what they're going to do. Defensive coverages and schemes in the NFL has been, is the exact same coverage as they've been doing since little league, a cover two is a cover two, a cover four is a cover four. It hasn't changed. And, you guys know that from the, from the, from the, from the onset, just from a defensive line, a four, three is a four, three. It hasn't changed, but if your defense can get pressure on the quarterback, that means that's going to adjust my routes. That might, that might, that might give the cornerback a little bit more chance to gamble. He won't back He was back pedal. Won't be as strong as I would think it would be. Um, and that's the difference. But if we got a defensive line, they changed, they changed the momentum on everything. Cornerbacks that have a defensive line typically are the ones that are highest paid because they're the ones that are going to gamble, get more picks. You look at Steph, uh, you look at Diggs over over at Dallas. You look at Ramsey over at the Rams. These guys, they're gambling because they can pocket as he would. Yeah, it's it's a concern for this team because they can't generate pressure without sending pressure, additional pressure in bodies. You know, it's great if you want to send Buda Baker off the edge, but you guys know this, and you're more susceptible on the back end. It's also frustrating you're in a division with multiple teams in San Francisco and L.A. that can generate pressure with, with four. The Cardinals can't do that right now. And until they do, they're going to be viewed as a finesse team, right? They're, they're just they're not a team that can get physical with you up front. No, John, and, and to that point, think about it. And I know that, Bo, that you threw out there the no-fly zone, but couple that with the fact that, you know, you can't stop the run. So if I'm yeah. an offensive coordinator, what am I going to do? Like, okay. They got a great, they got great DBs, but can they tackle? Because we're gonna come and make this game boring. I mean, you're gonna go play an old Bill Belichick. Like, why? I'm not even gonna try and go out there and throw the football. Yeah, that's great, but the game comes down to you lining up in front of me and me trying to overpower you to get to where I want to go. And I think once the Cardinals get to a point, Johnny, as you mentioned, being able to, to generate pressure without sending guys, without sending a linebacker, without sending a safety, Buda Baker taking playmakers out of their respective positions. Yes, Buda can make it blitzing. Yes, Isaiah Simmons can make it blitzing the quarterback. But then he's they're one-on-one, -on -one and it's a the probability of them getting home again to the quarterback is very minimal, right? It's 50-50. Or you let them play in their natural position, roam the field, you know, be man-on-man, -man, be be man-to-man, -man and be athletes and make plays. However, if you could just get home with three to four guys, that changes everything. You got more people to cover. You got linebackers who are playing their job, looking, you know, reading first, reacting, in in comparison to you know running to the quarterback and the quarterback identifies where that's coming from throwing hot getting some five six seven easy yards and it's second and three second and two that's where you don't want to be so i think the cardinals i think yeah. as i said you got to acknowledge talent where, where talent is stingley's a great player we got to do our due diligence we have to do our research but at the end of the day you know i think that that's one of those stored like yeah if he's there great we we'll, we'll definitely get him but I don't think the value there is for is needed for what they need at the defensive line. Well, the Cardinals are going to have to make a decision, but they've got ample time to do so. You are going to have to make a decision if you want to bet on the Masters tournament, mm. which is ongoing. Gentlemen, do you have a pick as to who's going to win the Masters this weekend on Sunday? Tiger Woo, I like him. <laughs> no, I mean, I don't know, man. I just, I know, I, I think you can't go wrong with Dustin Johnson, but the youth movement has been crazy. Uh, obviously, Tiger makes a great story. I mean, I'm, I'm when I got into the game heavily back in the day with Frank Jordan Spieth was, was in the mix. So those are just really names that I know. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm going to go, I'm going to go, <laughs> I'm going to go with uh, Dustin Johnson because I just know that he's always at the leaderboards. I'm going to be watching because of Tiger. And I hope, you know, that that was – I know in bets, Johnny, what does they say? The top three, how, how do you pick it? The top three finish? What is that? Yeah, top ten finish. Okay, top ten finish. But I'm picking those three in the top ten. I'm, I'm going to call it today. Those three, yeah. Tiger, Dustin, and Jordan in, in the top ten. I know Frank got a more in-depth, you know, analysis. 
Come on, Frank. You know. I, I, I mean, guy. look, uh, uh, Scotty Scheffler. <laughs> That's the guy who's balling. And uh, he he's the number one player in the world right now. John Rahm has not played in the last couple of weeks. I don't know if he's on injury reserve or not, but I'm always nervous about him because this guy has that dog in him. JT, Justin Thomas. I like that mm. name on the board. But, again, there's always this little wily little vet that shows up, man, on the back end. And to me right now, I do like that Tigers in the field, but I'm not sure if he's going to make the cut. That's Ooh. my concern. Frank, who was the dude with the mullet, man, that won the players? You know who I'm talking. He had a mullet. Straight yeah, he mullet. had a mullet. Um, I mean, he, he just, just salt, salt of the earth, man. You know what I mean? Like that. That. Yeah. I want him to win. I just want to see the mullet again. <laughs> <laughs> I think I we're mullet. sleeping on on Brooks though. Brooks Kepka, man. I mean, he's a he's a Masters winning machine. I'm on Brooks this week, even though I'm, you know, I'm tuning in for Tiger. I mean, that gets that that's that moves. The that's needle. why we watch. Yeah, that's yep. why we watch. But y'all see, Saul. Saul's like, I like me over Frank. Mm. <laughs> I take that bet, fam. Let's go. Mm. I take that bet. That's that's, that's risky that's for the boss, man. Frank I take that bet. Of course, I take that bet. Saul, Saul says he's a good stick. So look, we, he said I'm dodging him. I'm not dodging him, no, fam. You know where I'm at. So Johnny, you gotta take you gotta take the bets. Hands, right? you, you, you gotta, gotta take the bets. Like yeah, I'll take the money. I'll keep the money, and I'll use no, it on the DraftKings so Sportsbook app. See, see there <laughs> Get you the go. the action right now. New customers can bet five dollars on golf's first major. Get twenty five dollars in free bets for every birdie Bryson DeChambeau sinks in the first Ooh. round. DraftKings Sportsbook is the top rated app. Tons of ways to bet on golf. Get even closer with what's happening to the tournament and bet on who will win golf's first major single round matchups and more DraftKings is safe, secure and reliable. Best of all, you can deposit, withdraw your cash whenever you want. It's a call to action. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app. Now use that promo code PHNX, but $5 and win $25 in free bets. Again, with one of Bryson's birdies in the first round, you got to be 21 and over. However, Arizona only gambling problem call 1-800 next step. New customer only minimum Five dollar deposit. Eligibility restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details. The full squad is here. PHNX Cardinals. This is this is what it is going forward. And we've got a stacked roster. Johnny Venerable, Damian Anderson, Frank Sanders on Bo Brock. And talk about stacked squads. Bruce Arians joined the Cardinals flagship radio station. Was it today, Johnny? And he was talking to uh uh your guy. Uh, Wolf and Luke Lipinski. Uh, I, was was Wolf behaving himself? I know he was probably screaming about something, but uh, he, yeah, he was yelling on Arizona Sports today. But what else is new? That's why we love him, right? That's Wolf. You, you love a guy who, on like a two yard gain, is losing his mind in the broadcast booth. But he does his daily show, and he talked to BA and Bruce Arians. We've got the clip here. Emma, can you play this for us? Have you ever tried to get Larry to go play for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers? <laughs> <laughs> I did. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know what? I, I, what do you mean you did, B.A.? I mean, you, you tried to get him to, to play there with Tom Brady? Yeah, when we lost our guys. And, uh, you know, especially when Chris Gavin got hurt, I called Fitz. And he said, Coach, I couldn't run two plays right now. But thanks. That's it. I just had to check, brother. <laughs> I love it. I love it for several reasons, guys. That that BA is is transparent, is candid, is he's, he's an oh. Uncle Bruce still to this day. But also that Fitz was like, thanks, but no thanks. He won't say he's retired, but he's like, hey, I couldn't last two plays out there. Uh, I mean, Frank, was it a smart job, smart thing that Fitz didn't go back out there last season? No, not at all. I mean, I, I just I can't see that. I mean, you get a chance to play with Tom Brady. You could have been the answer to everything. Uh, you could have finished your career with a possible with the possibility of of helping them win a, a championship. And to me, I think that they would have they would have gave you enough chances to figure out could you do it or not. But so no, I don't think it was. But if he said he couldn't do it, I have to accept that. But in my best opinion, no, because if he had called me, I damn sure would have went out there right now, <laughs> right now, right now. No, Frank. I mean, I, I you cha you changed my mind, Frank, because I initially thought like you know you know Fitz was been eating good. You know what I mean? He been eating good, and he's like, nah, bro, I ain't, I, I don't want to go out there and tarnish the legacy, and I just need to 
just sit at home and chill with the kids and just be happy and play golf and, you know, play in the waste management open and, and make it happen. You know what I mean? And just enjoy life. Right. But to Frank's point, to have the opportunity to play with Tom Brady, you always got a chance. <laughs> I mean, you always got a chance. And there's not many like like TB12 or Bruce Arian. So to have that opportunity of them playing at the same, you know, coaching Gotta and playing do. at the same time, I think you should take advantage of it. But I would defer to Fitz because he's been around the game a long time. And I think he just I think he just knew better. Like the body wasn't ready. I knew I couldn't do it. And it just wasn't the right time or, or it will be the right time, you know, at this point in my life. I just think that Fitz has been eating good, relaxing and enjoying life. And Man, Fitz just, on pedal. Just, it didn't Fitz make sense pedal, to him. Fitz, Fitz Peloton living. Come on, JV. How many times have I noticed? He's, he's Peloton living. I know that probably, life well. Yeah, he's on juice. He's juicing all day long, man. Yeah, he's playing golf, but he's not. He's not. He's not about to turn about to be two forty in a couple of weeks. Yeah. He had time. He, he he's a Peloton guy. He kept himself in shape for just three routes. Three routes at least. No, I mean, it, yeah, and, and having just the ability to run the underneath stuff. You know, you, you got the big guy out there. At you know to go yeah at X and and Fitz played that position. He transitioned to that position, you know, with Cliff and even with BA when BA was moving him around. So there was opportunities for him there. And I mean, I think that everyone, you know, there were a lot of talks about that initially when once he was done, right? That will he go to join BA in Tampa? And to I think everyone, it made a lot of sense. Uh, unfortunately, Fitz wasn't in that space. I don't think I just maybe he just wants to retire a Cardinal. He cares about the Cardinals that much. I mean, maybe that played a role in it. To me, it would have made more sense to come back with Arizona because at the same time that Tampa lost Chris Godwin, the Cardinals were dealing with the DeAndre Hopkins injury. And I would have thought that if the Cardinals had reached out, he, that would be the only team maybe he would consider coming back and playing for. But we don't know if the Cardinals or Cliff Kingsbury reached out to Larry Fitzgerald when DeAndre Hopkins was scheduled to miss the rest of the season. Uh, remember, it was kind of buzzing. We talked about it on this show, mm -hmm. Frank, in December. Like, do the Cardinals yep. call Fitz? Would Fitz come back? Um, so... Uh, to me, that's the interesting dynamic of this. Also, that he probably received a phone call from Tom Brady. Tom Brady, the ultimate recruiter. Tom Brady recruiting the likes of Antonio Brown, Russell Gage this offseason, third and fourth receivers. Like if Brady feels like he's got an opportunity to win a Super Bowl and Larry Fitzgerald is the missing piece, like I'm sure he's going to try to court him. So I wanted two things. Of course, of course, Larry's making it clear, like, I'm only going to ever play for the Cardinals. He said that before. And then also, like, I believe him. I, I'm sure he was just not in shape to play, Bo. Yeah. No, he would have had a negative yak if he played this season. Like he just didn't have, he didn't have the speed the previous season. I don't think he he knew it. He he knows he's done. He had 400 yards the previous year. <laughs> and he had a great career, and that's not a knock on a guy. He 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 extended his career a lot longer than any other wide receiver has done in the history of the game. He had a career resurgence when BA took the job. He moved to the slot, and it was incredible what he did. Now let's just erect one, two, three statues of the guy around the valley because he deserves every single one of them. Uh, he does a uh, radio show with Tom Brady. He gets enough of Tom Brady. He doesn't need to go play with him. And he doesn't. he's going to wear pewter, pewter. We're not going to watch Larry Fitzgerald wear pewter or wherever the hell the Bucks wear. That Jerry oh, Rice wore bro, like 100 bro. different uniforms, though. All I'm going to say is champions. <laughs> champions. Hey, they still got I a mean, Cooper, Cooper, Cooper look, Cup. Look, Larry look, look at the clock. Look, they going to they pull out one of those ball at you. Look at the clock, man. Look at the clock. We champions. In 2000, what was it, 20? Champions. Yeah. But that's that was it. last that's year. It was last year. They still haven't covered Cooper Cup. I'm with, still I'm, I'm, with you. I'm with you. If if we're a fifth, we'd all be drunk. Cooper Cup, what the Rams got going on is real deal. I, I agree. But if you – that defense is solid. They dealt with some injuries. The probability of that happening again won't happen. You got TB12 back there. He's one more with less. He's one more with less. And if you got Larry Fitzgerald, he got more. So I don't know. I just think that Johnny, I, I agree with you. I just feel, I just don't think that he had it. You know, he didn't have it. He's, 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 he's done. He's done. He's done. And yeah. I think uh, once the Cardinals made it kind of clear, like come back if you want, but we're not going to court you. We're certainly not going to pay you $11 million again to come back. It's no secret. And I'm not trying to start shit on this show, but he, he and Kyler Murray aren't close, right? got a different kind of mindset they're in two different places in their lives and so I, I think if Kyler Murray and, and Larry had been closer maybe Larry plays one more year but I think that was it like once he knew like okay this is Kyler's team you know maybe we don't have the best relationship I'm not going to be paid a premium I had, the, I had the COVID scare the year before that probably made him think twice about coming back again he lost a bunch of weight 
Uh, he said he was getting his will ready. I think that was it. I think that was it. I think he decided, hey, they're moving in, in a new direction. So am I. I mean, they better put some respect on Larry Fitzgerald's name. I don't want to see how they're treating LeBron out there in the NBA. You know what I mean? Larry, Larry it deserves, you know, the respect of everyone. Don't get me wrong. I think Kyler Murray, the world of Kyler Murray. But that's unfortunate that they couldn't make that relationship work. And, and I think that Frank and I were close to the Cardinals when B.A. coached. And, you know, B.A. used to get in Larry's ass. You know what I'm saying? Like, B.A. BA held, held Larry accountable. So that may have could have been, you know, a part that their relationship wasn't the best. And that's why Larry didn't want to go to a place where, you know, he, he had to get chastised when he's, you know, walking around in a 12,000-square-foot 12, home with, you know, mountain views, right? <laughs> Just saying. Eating grapes, getting grapes dangled to his face with waterfalls in the back. In the back, I'm just saying that that's type. That's what he. That's how he lived. It's a hell of a life, uh, lifestyle right there. <laughs> hell of a lifestyle. Welcome to the valley. <laughs> you have to know when Fitz changes his uh, his social media profile byline as former athlete, he's not going to change it back. I mean, that's just the, the type of guy he is, right? So, Facts. congratulations on a great career. I hope we get to celebrate it one day. But I know Larry likes to kind of stay. Uh, in the shadows and he said there's not going to be any press conference there's not going to be any tears but at some point you know there's he's going to be in that ring of honor he's going to be wearing that gold jacket it's going to be great and uh you know greatest cardinal ever i would agree i mean I, you can't argue that man you can't argue that johnny the uh kyler murray hot seat i mean you already started talking about k1 a little bit and that's not my opinion that's somebody else's opinion that's right. on, on a different site that i don't frequent but you sent me this god forsaken article this morning, well it's, so let's it's talk not about like it. it's a blog site i mean it's, it's bleacher report and they were kind of uh outlining some of the quarterbacks that might be on the hot seat which is new a new thing i thought only coaches and gms could be on hot seats but quarterbacks are apparently on the hot seat as well. But first, we got to tell you about our brand new partner in the house here at PHNX. We are excited to welcome OG's brands and the PHNX family. OG's is one of Arizona's first original scratch made cannabis kitchens and is dedicated to creating innovative and memorable cannabis infused products, a flavor of life's journey. Quality of their products stem from the combination of accurate dosing and amazing flavor. Edibles are not one-size-fits-all product. That's why OG's is proud to offer a wide range of products for all demographics and preferences. PHNX Cardinals, Bo Brock, Johnny Venerable, Damian Anderson, Frank Sanders, thank you for finding us wherever you find podcasts. If you're watching live, as you talk every 4 p.m. every afternoon on YouTube, please hit subscribe, smash that like button. All right, so Bleacher Report put out a list recently, a couple days ago, and they have Kyler Murray as a quarterback on the hot seat, meaning that if he doesn't get take his game to the next level, that he should potentially be done as an Arizona Cardinals quarterback. Damian Anderson, is that absurd to think about, talk about? Kyler need to walk up to Cliff Kingsbury and Steve Kime and Michael Bidwell like Big Worm on Friday and ask him <laughs> where my money at. I mean, <laughs> I'm, the, I'm just saying, he need to pull up Rod Tidwell, Jerry Maguire, show me my money. Because Kyler Murray, if you do a comp of his contemporaries, right, if you look at Lamar Jackson, you look at uh, Josh Allen, you, you, you look at his contemporaries in their first playoff game, I'm going to give you guys some numbers. Lamar Jackson, 68.3 rating. Josh Allen, 69 rating. Patrick Mahomes, stud, 98.9. Um, uh, Stafford, in his third year, 2011, threw two touchdowns in his first – I mean, two interceptions, costly interceptions late in the game. So if you couple that and you make it relative, you're like, oh, okay. It's like, calm down, man. Like, pipe down. Like, Kyler Murray, they, they need to appreciate Kyler Murray. Or will be another Matthew Stafford type situation where in year six, seven, he's going to be gone leading somebody else to the Super Bowl. That's how that's how good I think this kid is. If you look at the comp from the first three years, Kyler Murray versus Matthew Stafford, who end up having to be traded to go to L.A., right, to be on a team, as we mentioned, that could generate, you know, pressure on a defensive line, having a defense that he could count on, having the tools, an offensive guru. Kyler Murray is has a negative tone right now due to the fact that, he had one, he had really one real bad game. One real bad game in his career. 
And that was, at, unfortunately, it was a national TV against the, the, the went on to be the, the, the champions, the NFL champions, right? So does he have to play better? Does his passer rating need to be, be better in the postseason? Absolutely. But I think Kyler Murray is a gem, and there's nothing to this article. Yeah, he's on the hot seat, and he should be on the hot seat. You know why? Because he's he's got commodity. And I tell you what we can do. Yes, we can trade him and find a way to make something else happen. If he's going to be the one that he's going to be the burner phone that they're using right now, then hell yeah, he's on the hot seat because the way they look at it right now, they've, they've locked in their general manager. They've locked in their coach, and they haven't locked in their quarterback. And guess what? Our offseason, since I've missed you guys, have dealt me up a nice tight end. Yay! The Cardinals are winning in the in the, in the free agency market. No, they're not. because They don't care. Apparently, they're going in a different direction. They're showing us that in our faces. Right now, they're showing us that. So, to me, I agree with you. Let's look at the comps. And we can definitely make, we can make an argument that our quarterback's better than your quarterback. Or it's possible that's just the first. That's what happens when you get your first – you get your first time in the playoffs. You might not. It might go great. It might not. But guess what? Is he on the hot seat? Yeah, because no one's barking up Cliff Kingsbury's tree. They're only talking about K one. He's the one with the ball. You're the, you're two. You're not tall. You're not. You're not. You're not personable. You're not this. You're not that. Yeah, he's gonna be on the hot seat. Should he be? I'm like you, big worm. Hell yeah. But he's not gonna be. <laughs> Will he be? Nah. He's gonna. He's small worm right now, man. He's the small, small one. worm. He's small the small worm. worm. Yeah, man, because guess what? They've already signed the two big dogs. They've already they told got, you who they, they're riding away. And, and, and that's and what who they're they, doing. Who, who they agent, Frank? Hey, man, this guy knows. Exactly. He's sleeping. Who, who he, they he, two, he got two phones, one for the plug and one for the low. <laughs> they all got the same age. It's just, I think it's just about timing. Don't get me wrong. I think Kyler got something in his ear, and they were like, they're going to pay me how much? How much? Okay, I'm going to put the pictures back. Put the pictures back on the Instagram. They don't pay me how <laughs> Put them back. Yeah, they 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 going they they send it on Tuesday. So I think that's what it is. I think that they go on. They're in talks. They all have the same representative, and it's you know just a matter of process. Steve, Cliff, and Kyle, I mean, who they've been winning with? A ask uh, the Saints how they feel without Drew Brees. Ask the Texans how they feel without Deshaun Watson, because there ain't many out there like Kyler Murray that could come yeah. in put up in his first three seasons, 11,000 yards passing and 1,000 yards rushing. It ain't happening. It's, it's not happening. There ain't most out there doing it. Buy me a Kyle Murray was a life preserver for this organization when they bottomed out in 2019. I like to play a game. If Kyler Murray was a quarterback in any other conference or division, how would he fare? If he was in the NFC East, he'd probably have three straight NFC East championships and route to three straight playoff bursts. I think – Part of the reason why Kyler Murray wants to get paid a premium now, of course he deserves it. If you think about you, you get brains beat in in the course of a season in the NFC West with two teams that are in the NFC Championship game, the L.A. Rams who have been to the Super Bowl, the Niners have been to the Super Bowl since Kyler Murray has come into the NFL. I, I think you have to pay a premium for a premium in today's, in today's game. You become what the Seattle Seahawks are quickly going to become if you don't pay Kyler Murray, and that's irrelevant as an organization. You're not going to be on national TV the net worth of your organization is going to go down significantly. So I, you just you don't have a choice. So that that's why I think these articles are, are just kind of off base because like he, he can't be lumped in with the likes of Tua and Jared Goff and some of the other guys because it's like those organizations have options. The Cardinals don't have options, right? They can either have Kyler Murray and pay him and be relevant and be a playoff team as they stand today, or they cannot pay him, allow him to leave, feel the retribution – and the heat of the fan base as a result and never be close to sniffing the playoffs for the immediate future. I think it's an easy decision. So to me, it's like, yeah, is he an imperfect player right now? Of course. Is he in his early tw early to mid twenties? Do we give him some, some, some room for growth? I don't, I don't think enough is played on the fact that he plays in the toughest division of football and, and for large stretches carries this team. Maybe the fact that he gets banged up over the course of the, of the, of a given season is because he has to play or Donald twice if he was in the NFC East or the NFC North, right, the NFC South this year is garbage. There's been one division that's been the constant in the conference, and that's the one he's played in since 2019. I'll say this, though. I mean, I think he's most definitely on the hot seat, it's extension or not. I mean, we, we named off Deshaun Watson. You can look at Jared Goff, Carson Wentz. Every single one of, those, one of those guys signed an extension, and they still moved off of those teams. So signing him to an extension does not take him off the hot seat. and He's most definitely on the hot seat. 
his, his last performance and what the hell's gone on this this offseason too with his agent i mean he's come he's become one of the more polarizing figures of this franchise where before everybody was like let's ride or die with kyler he's our guy but now there's a bunch of question marks. Well, you know, regardless of what his numbers are, of course, he's, you know, the first guy to reach 70 touchdowns th- throughout the air and 20 on the ground and all these incredible numbers. And yeah, he's the greatest quarterback that the Cardinals franchise has ever drafted. There's Correct. those are lies, but it doesn't change the fact that he played poorly in front of a national audience. There's, you know, the reports that are coming out that are not great about Kyler Murray and how he conducts himself on the sidelines and in the locker room. And he, the only way he's going to change that is with a solid season in 2022. That's the only way he changes it because if he, he plays, a, if he has a mediocre campaign, he's going to be on the hot seat. And that could mean, you know, the Cardinals could be in business of, of moving off of Kyler Murray. I think that's, that's, that's a very real thing that could happen. I, I think that you, you can do yourself a disservice as an organization by not putting the pieces around him to be successful, not on the field, but like you hired a college coach. Right. Your leadership was already on shaky ground. Your GM didn't have a good reputation when Murray came in house. Like, I, I, don't, I don't think that that's talked about enough to go coincide with the fact that maybe Kyler's been enabled for some poor habits off the field with with, you know, leadership qualities the first couple of years. Both those things can be true. I mean, how, how did you, you guys act? How, how would you react if you were able to be yourself at 24 years old with a couple million dollars in the bank? Not I mean, well. And, and, I would not and, act and t- well. In today's society, I think it's almost expected, but you all, there's context and circumstances to everything, right? Like Kyler is in his mid, you know, mid to young twenties. He does have he's he's, you know, running. He's the face of a billion dollar, you know, industry, you know, a, a billion dollar team right now. Johnny, to your point earlier, you know, he's played in the toughest division. So, Bo, you know, I throw this back at you. How would you feel if you got hit in the face every game? And how, would you smile when you came inside? Like, like man, all right. <laughs> they hitting the day. I'm like, hell no, bro. Like, you'd be like, bro, god damn. You know what I mean? Well, somebody, and that's the type of face that Kyler had. I, I'm, I'm, uh, I don't get mad for him for not having the uh, composure or the etiquette to walk back to the, the, the huddle with a smile on his face. I mean, he's a passionate guy. He plays the game. He's done nothing but one. I mean, do play one year at Oklahoma, won the Heisman. He came into the league, tore it up, did everything that he could possibly do. I think what you see is like, he doesn't maybe know how to communicate. Like, I need a little bit of help out here. It's, I think that you learn, right? As we grow, we're not the same person we were when we were 20-something, right? And I think that Kyler, if he has these conversations, hopefully the right people are talking to him. They get the right people around him. Johnny, if that's a coach or if that's additional, you know, players that he's played with, who knows? But I Hire think Jim what, Caldwell as a senior offensive assistant. I've been saying it for two months. What, what all, what, winning cures everything. So sure. as long as as long as Kyler continues to win, no one's talking about. It. As long as he continues to win and doesn't have a forty something passer rating in a playoff football game, we don't have this conversation. Bo, I agree with you. You know, every quarterback in the National Football League is under the hot seat. They got to continue to play, continue to get better. Um, I just think that they should pay him his money. They could still. I mean, again, you know, Jared Goff. Uh, the lines were were relevant. They we, they were talked about when Stafford was there. Jared Goff. It's like, uh, all right, y'all. You know what I mean? It, it, it's been real, but Kyler makes, gives the Cardinals a name, relevance, you know, I'd say the star factor, all the above, you know, kids today want to be, you know, Barry Sanders with a Troy Aikman arm. And that's what Kyler Murray is. I completely agree. And and I would love to live in the world of nuance and, and gray area where and you can put context around, you know, arguments about Kyler Murray, but also, you know, two things remain true. He's a great quarterback best in franchise history that they've drafted and he should be, you know, the pillar of this franchise, one they build around, but also, you know, his, his seat is this, you know, it, it's hotter than my wife watching Bridgerton season two. I mean, it's, it's on fire right now. So he's, he's just going to have to have a good, we got seat. a couple of confused gentlemen <laughs> after that comment, Bo Brock, you're going to have to, you're going to have to clarify. Look, look, it turns the temperature up in my living room and I'm, and it's not me. It's, it's my wife watching. We're that. missing my guy from season one though. My guy who departed season one. You guys know? Okay. He's he's the Kyler Murray of that of that uh, TV yeah. series. But uh, that's that's unfortunate. People people are they they want you know obviously success. If Kyler Murray can continue the success, get away from his last game on the football field, and be more like he's been the first three seasons, Cardinals are going to be in a great spot. 
I tell you what, won't be in a great spot. If they don't sign him, he will not be at camp. I tell you that. You still think that? Hell yeah. I feel I like that. that's Ch- he's, he's not- hanging out with JJ, working out. They're bros. They're hanging hey, out. I'm I'm there. That's fine. That's cool. There's a bonus probably attached to his contract somewhere where if you show up for training or you show up for camp, there's a little nice little maybe 1.2 or 2.3. He getting or, that, Frank. He, he getting, getting that, that bonus. Yeah, as long as I show up to training camp, I get the bonus. But yeah, I guess what? That. I'm not playing. I'm not doing that. Not, I'm not doing that kind of goddamn thing if I'm not I don't sign that contract. And I use all those verbs that you like, uh, DA. All those verbs. I'm not playing. Yeah. No. It's uh, it's sad that we have to have this conversation about a quarterback. Guys, let's walk this dog back, man. Last year, um, Johnny, when we were starting this conversation, and they went out and got those picks, they they were making a run, looking like they really was trying to put this team going to the next level, fighting for fighting for the rights to be considered one of the top teams in in the division. They went out and got JJ. They added some more. That is what it took for us to do it, James Conner. It's just look at us now. A full year he's removed from that moment of being a 10 and 2 team. A couple more games. We're sitting fat into the playoffs. And now look at us. We got a, we got, we got a, we're sitting on our hands. We're going to we're going to weird places around the country, looking at players that are not even in the top five of their positions. Come on, man. Give me a break. Like this is this is where we're at right now. And unfortunately, our starting quarterback was one of the best in the NFL, is getting the blunt of like what what has it, what hasn't he done? Um that's a sad place to be right now, and that story is dragging out. Remember how we were talking about how petty Kyler was at the little stories that was coming out about him? How much more petty? How much? How much petty you think he'd be now if he doesn't get it? If he doesn't get his contract and he had to soak up this whole off season uh, with I'm the problem of this team, and yet look what you put around me again? Absolutely nothing. Yeah, Crap. no, for, yeah. I, I, yeah, I, I think that he's definitely going to want some some help. You know, you got Ertz. He's got a relationship there. You got – you also have, you know, James Conner with his ability to, to rush the football. You got your outside threat. So, I, I, I just – I don't know. I don't think that he's necessarily paying attention to the words. I think he hears it and, and things of that nature. But I think Kyler's a dog. Kyler wants to win. And he's done that at every – level frank and i and i think you know this as a player we think about our worst but you, you could have your best game ever but you drop one pass and that's what you think about you don't think about the three touchdowns you don't think about it's like a guy grading out you know you got 60 plays and you got you know a, a tackle you give up two sacks and you grade out at maybe 90 you know 96 percent or something like that but all that's all you think about that's 96 is still is grading out well it's just unfortunately that one of his worst performances yeah, i think you have to acknowledge you know the the surrounding pieces around him the offensive line he was getting rushed the, they did go on to to win the the super bowl that being the LA Rams with Aaron Donald Von Miller etc what what does what does I, I essentially kyler has put smiles on everyone Arizona fan Arizona Cardinals faces for the last three years it was one game does he need to acknowledge maybe act more professional play better I think Kyler needs to keep being Kyler be aware of some some areas where he can improve and just don't worry about what we got to say keep being Kyler you know what I mean I there's no players no players came out and said that it was sources no no player came out no player came out and said that I didn't hear one player I didn't hear one coach I didn't hear one G we just we talking about sources Sources. Talking about sources, absolutely. The uh, for you know, a lot of I'm sure every single person on this podcast, Johnny Venerable, Damian Anderson, Frank Sanders, myself. I mean, it takes adversity for us to grow, and and maybe this is the type of adversity that's going to make a guy like Kyler Murray mature. Maybe like he he takes a step forward as a leader. It'd be huge for the Arizona Cardinals, no doubt about it. I want to tell you that children five and older eligible for COVID-19 vaccine. The vaccine, the best tool we have to reduce the chances of getting sick. The vaccine can reduce the risk of being hospitalized or dying from the disease. Safe, free, highly effective vaccines are available throughout Arizona. Visit azhealth.gov slash find vaccine for a location near you, Johnny. A lot of good stuff happening at gophnx.com. You can check out our phenomenal. Kyler Murray wants to get his bonus so he can go buy all the merchandise from gophnx. Yes. And the phnx merchandise locker, including these fire new hats. These are brand new spanking new releases you can get right now. We cannot wait to get our own. Rep them at our upcoming draft party April 28th. We'll have more information as it becomes available. We can't wait to see all of you out for draft weekend in phnx. 
gophnx.com, where you can find the many talented peers of myself, Mr. Bo Brock. Mr. Bo Brock got an article debuting, I believe, what, in the next 24 hours, Bo, regarding sure. Steve Kimes. It's grading damn near every Steve Kimes draft pick in recent memory. You can become a member, 50 cents for the first month, $8.99 for the subsequent months, or you can pay just under 60 bucks for the year. Get a free t-shirt from our PHNX merchandise locker. Bo, you got one of our tees on right now, my man? Oh, yeah. Look at that. The bird on the ball, classic stuff. That was our first t-shirt. Man, yeah, we've man. come a long way. But you can, you can still say classy with the classic. We appreciate all the love and support as we continue to churn along, become a member of this family. Be sure to like, subscribe, leave us a five-star review. Wherever you get your podcast, follow us at PHNX Sports on Twitter. Go PHNX.com. We'll be back tomorrow and better than ever. PHNX Cardinals Live, 4 p.m. We will see you then.